everyone. Today we'll be presenting about the different types of securities fraud, how it affects the business industry, and the actions taken to prevent it. We decided to choose this topic because it's important to know the legal issues behind company stock investment. Since the creation of the New York Stock Exchange on May 17, 1792, the stock market has experienced multiple examples of stock market fraud. If researched further, there are numerous examples of fraud within primitive versions of today's stock market, most of which are performed to illegally gain billions of dollars at the expense of others. In today's modern world, a simple search of this topic brings up billions of results. There are countless examples of scams and fraudulent activities with people's investments. Some of them took place years ago, and many are still feeling the dramatic effects of both of them. Presented to the right are the photographs of Jordan Belfort, of whom the movie The Wolf of Wall Street is about, and Bertie Madoff, the conductor of one of the most notorious Ponzi schemes in history. To better your understanding, we have provided an example of one of the most common forms of securities fraud. Fraudulent misrepresentation can be represented perfectly in this clip of the hit movie, Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Hello John, how you doing today? You mailed in my company a postcard a few weeks back requesting information on penny stocks that had huge upside potential with very little downside risk. Does that ring a bell? Oh, yeah, I may have said so. Okay, great. Well, reason for the call today, John, is something just came across my desk, John. It is perhaps the best thing I've seen in the last six months. If you have 60 seconds, I'd like to share the idea with you. You got a minute? Name of the company, Aerotine International. It is a cutting-edge, high-tech firm out of the Midwest awaiting imminent patent approval on a next generation of radar detectors that have both huge military and civilian applications. Now, right now, John, the stock trades over the counter at 10 cents a share. And by the way, John, our analysts indicate it could go a heck of a lot higher than that. Your profit on a mere $6,000 investment would be upwards of $60,000. Here you can see Jordan Belfort was not completely honest, which is a similar tactic companies use, whether through their accounting documents or with public news. Over the past couple of decades, there have been enormous scandals involving forms of stock fraud which stole billions of dollars from investors. Securities fraud can be a get-rich-quick deal, but it is dangerous and viewed as a serious crime. Two of the biggest security fraud cases in history are the Enron scandal, which took place in 2001, and Bernie Madoff's notorious Ponzi scheme, which happened in 2008. The Enron scandal is the largest securities fraud scandal in the history of the stock market. Fraudulent material misrepresentation and forged account statements and documents are the two major forms of fraud that were involved in this scandal. Fraudulent material misrepresentation, as shown in Wolf of Wall Street, is when a company lies to investors to make it seem like their company is doing better than it actually is, giving them a reason to invest more money into said company. The misrepresented material can be created through forged account statements and documents, commonly known as cooking the books. Eventually, Enron's debt started piling up, causing multiple executive employees to get out while they could. When shares dropped from $90 to less than $1 per share, Enron declared bankruptcy, causing billions of dollars to be lost for investors and, and employees some of whom had their retirement pensions invested into the Enron stock. Trials were held up until 2013 to continue to find evidence, as well as accepting plea bargains and trying to find new people of involvement. Another infamous scandal in the stock market was the Bernard Madoff Ponzi scheme. Bernie Madoff was chairman of his own Wall Street company, the Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities, LLC. He was an incredibly skilled investor who used his talents to scam over $60 billion out of investors who had no clue what was going on throughout their investment period. He was able to do this through what is known as a Ponzi scheme. He would take money from new investors and pile it into the old investors, causing them to think they were making money, when in reality he was pocketing the earnings made by the older investors. This was a circular flow, and as new investors continued to pile in, that money would be put into the old investors' accounts. For a while, people just thought Madoff was an investing genius due to his success, but as with all great scandals, people started to become suspicious. For instance, Madoff rarely had a down month, even when the Standard & Poor's Index was down 7.5%, one of the greatest falls of the decades. Long-time investors continually made money with little to no losses. This was so suspicious that even the investors themselves started questioning what was going on inside the company. The business was extremely private and secretive. The company had limited amounts of employees and was considered a black box on Wall Street because everything done inside it was kept completely quiet. Madoff eventually told his sons of his actions in 2008, who turned him into the Federal Bureau of Investigations. He was then sentenced to 150 years in prison. 
Madoff's Ponzi scheme is the greatest Ponzi scheme in stock market history, shocking the world as well as investors who lost billions of dollars total. After the stock market crash in the 1930s, confidence in the markets was almost non-existent. Investors and the banks that had loaned to them lost large amounts of money. Congress passed the Securities Act of 1933 and the Securities Exchange Act of 1934 in an attempt to recover the economy. The main purpose of these acts was to restore investor confidence in our capital markets by providing investors and the markets with accurate information and clear rules of honest dealing. Together, these acts created the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission. President Bush signed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act into law on July 30, 2002, in response to a couple accounting scandals such as Enron. The act enforced more strict and effective internal controls to combat corporate and accounting fraud. The Public Company Accounting Oversight Board was also created under the act to oversee the activities of the account auditing profession. Most recently, President Obama signed the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform into law on July 21, 2010. This legislation places major regulations on the financial industry. Ponzi schemes are probably the most dangerous form of fraud to investors. In one scheme, Bernie Madoff stole $60 billion. That's more money than the richest person in the world has accumulated. We learned that Ponzi schemes exist in our everyday life. Companies make their stock look appealing to new investors, causing them to invest and eventually lose all of their money. I mean, who wouldn't want to invest in a company that never has a down month, even when all other companies are struggling to stay alive? People with PhDs couldn't even sniff out the fraud because they were altering every aspect that could be studied. And if you didn't get scammed, good luck getting your money back. The IRS reported that 3% of all people who lost their money in a Ponzi scheme in 2013 recovered the money they lost. Enron was one of the largest auditing scandals of the 21st century. It led to the biggest bankruptcy America has ever seen at that time. This scandal was all made possible by Enron taking advantage of accounting loopholes. They hid failed projects and billions of dollars in debt. The investors hedged a $40 billion lawsuit against Enron after the stock fell to $1 per share. Investors only got back limited returns despite losing billions in pensions and stock prices. This type of fraud could have been stopped if auditors would have remained independent of their employers. The Sarbanes-Oxley Act placed a higher penalty on auditors who destroy key documents. Concluding our research and analysis, our group has learned the different types of securities fraud such as fraudulent misrepresentation and the act of the Ponzi scheme. Under the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, there have been acts implemented to combat fraud and maintain internal control. By researching cases such as Enron and Stratton Oatmont, we were able to understand how each concept of fraud was used in real-life applications and the repercussions of those crimes.